Good morning everyone and thanks for joining me for another devlog for Dauphin. We're kicking things off just after 6am on Wednesday morning and in this episode I'm hoping to take the cave tile set that I started working on in the last video and use that to procedurally generate caves for the player to explore. It's been a little over a week since the last video, and in that time I took a much needed mini vacation to go visit my family for the 4th of July. Now I kind of thought that was going to be a few days for me to just totally disconnect, but after spending just a little bit of time on the lake back home, I really got excited about working on Dauphin again, so I pulled out my laptop and made quite a bit of progress. Today I want to kick things off by walking you through that just to get you caught up, so let's go ahead and take a look. Alrighty, so here's our cave that we started building out in the last episode, and nothing has actually changed about the interior here. The pixel art still needs quite a bit of cleanup, and the cave is still looking really blocky, but hopefully that's something we'll be able to fix once we're procedurally generating this thing. What has changed in the past week is the fact that we can now enter and exit the cave. So we'll go ahead and walk through the door, and you'll see we transition to the beach, and there's a couple things going on here. First you'll notice, of course, the scene changes, but we've also got this little transition that goes from bottom to top, as well as a title that slides down to show you what scene you've just loaded into. Now this transition I think is pretty cool, cooler than a fade to black, but it is a little bit busy, so I'm really curious to hear what you guys think. In any case, it's just the last foundational piece we needed in order to create a cave and be able to enter it. So at this point I'm feeling slightly more ready to go ahead and try to actually procedurally generate that cave. If you're curious about the method I chose to change scenes, I've basically just created an auto-load singleton world manager type of class. Now this thing is always sitting in the background ready for me to use, and it just has two responsibilities. The first and most important one is to kind of free up the current scene and load a new one, of course. But the other responsibility is to store a reference to the player from the old scene so that we can move the player from the old scene to the new scene as is without having to instantiate a new one. Pretty simple and not too many lines of code, so I was happy with that solution. So what's the plan for procedural cave generation? You may remember this little demo that I used in the last episode, mostly made by GD Quest and adapted to my project to create this square level with a path from somewhere on the top to somewhere on the bottom. I really like how this works, and I think I should be able to modify it to kind of remove all the extra stuff around the sides of the path that I don't want, and ultimately just have a linear path from top to bottom of the cave for the player to explore. It's definitely worth mentioning that a lot of you suggested the use of cellular automata for cave generation, and I learned a little bit more about that, and I think you're completely right. That looks like a really cool way to do this. That's something that I'm going to explore in the very near future. I just want to flesh this algorithm out a little bit more and see if I can adapt it to my needs because there are a few things I like about it. Perhaps the thing I like most is that it uses these predefined rooms to lay out the map. This means that I can add my own little flavor and touches to these rooms so that the whole map is not totally random and I can create some cool rooms here and there with special enemies or rewards or bosses or whatever. I think this will just be a cool way to kind of do a mix between handcrafted and procedurally generated. So I'm just going to try this way first. I have certainly talked long enough at this point. It's almost 6.30 now. Got a fresh cup of coffee and I'm ready to go heads down and start working on these caves. We'll catch up when I've made some progress. Alright, I'm back to check in just after 8 o'clock, almost time to get ready for work, but I actually made quite a bit of progress on these caves, so I'm going to walk you guys through that really quickly. I'm just going to jump right in and launch my procedural cave scene so you can see what type of caves can be generated. This looks pretty similar to what we saw before. We've still got a big square tile map, but instead of having all these extra side rooms that the player could get lost in, we just fill those up with ceiling tiles so the player can't access them. The result is a linear cave that the player will be able to walk through, fight enemies, and have a reward at the end. I'm going to go ahead and run this a few more times so that we can see different layouts. It's kind of cool. Some of the caves are rather narrow, some of them have these big passages, and each of them has one entrance and one exit. So I think it's going to be a nice balance of exploration without wasting too much time in one of these caves. I should of course mention as well that this is not going to be the final look of the way that these caves are generated. I have a lot of work to do with the auto tiling which looks pretty bad right now, and also I still can avoid some of these sharper edges just by playing around with different designs for the individual rooms that compose these caves. But for right now, I have to say I'm pretty happy with this solution after a morning's worth of effort. 
I think that'll have to do it for now. Time to get ready for work, but overall really good progress this morning. When I come back, either after work or tomorrow morning, I'm going to work on cleaning up those caves and maybe even adding an enemy before we allow the player to explore them. Welcome back everyone. It's just going on 6.30 a.m. on Thursday morning. I've only got about an hour before I work out, so I think I'm going to spend that time working on the artwork for the caves. Of course, trying to spruce up the rooms a little bit, but also improving the behavior of the auto tiling so that these rooms are laid out in a more aesthetic way. Welcome back everyone. It is now Saturday morning just after 7 a.m. It's been a few days since we caught up and that's not because I haven't made any progress, quite the opposite really. I kind of went crazy over the past few days trying to get my level generation just the way I wanted it and in the pursuit of that I ended up rewriting the entire system from scratch. The result is something that's far more flexible in terms of creating new and different shapes for levels at the cost of taking a little more effort to set up for new level types. Let's go ahead and take a look. I'll start with a quick recap of the level generation system I was working with before and ultimately wanted to build upon. This is the demo from GD Quest that I showed you before, and this algorithm has two inputs. The first is a scene for the rooms, which contains all the different rooms that are actually used to build out the level. And the second is a grid size. And if we jump over to the demo here, you'll see how that grid size works. The first thing this system does is actually draw the grid and then create a path from some point on the top of the grid to some point on the bottom of the grid and fill in all the spaces around it. Now this works really well for creating a path from top to bottom, but what I realized is that I don't really always want the player to have to travel from top to bottom in whatever cave or dungeon they are exploring. So here's my new system that tries to solve that problem. You can see here in the generate level function that the workflow is basically the same as it was before, but there's one main difference. If you look over here at the script variables, you'll see the inputs to my algorithm. The first is still the room scene, because I really like the idea of generating these levels from handcrafted components, but instead of specifying a grid size, we specify a path length. This value represents the length of the happy path that the player will have to travel to get from the entrance of the level to the exit. The first thing this new system does is take random steps to populate that path. It's not constrained within any kind of grid or anything, so the results are levels that can be really long and snake-like, which I think is awesome for something like a cave. Here's a pretty cool example of a level generated using this algorithm. The entrance is here on the left side of the level, so the player will have to traverse almost entirely to the right to reach the exit. It's important to note that the final shape here is not a square, it's a rectangle, and that's based off of the shape of this path. The first thing the algorithm does is draw the path, then determine the top left position of that path and the bottom right position. From there, we draw a grid to match whatever the general shape is, in this case, kind of an elongated rectangle, and then it fills in all the extra space here outside of the path, and ultimately finishes by drawing a border around it to create this nice clean shape. Writing this system from scratch was a pretty big task, but I have to say I'm thrilled with the results. I think the algorithm produces quite a nice bit of variety with the generated levels, and ultimately this thing is something that I built and fully understand, so I'll be able to easily customize and extend it in the future. But wait, there's more. I was so fired up after getting that new system working that I just couldn't sleep without having the player be able to explore these new caves. So now if we're on the beach and we decided to enter this door here, we will appear in a never-before-seen seaside cave. So let's go ahead and walk through this thing. Looks like it opens up to a pretty big room here. Anytime two adjacent squares are drawn on the happy path, the system will take a chance to combine those rooms, which is what happens with these bigger rooms here. Looks like if we keep going up, it narrows out, takes us to the left, and I think the exit should be coming up soon. Yep, here is our exit. So if we go inside this exit, we'll just reappear at the scene that we entered from, in this case, the beach. So that was pretty cool. Really like how that turned out. 
This has been a crazy amount of progress for the past two days, but I'm not ready to end the devlog just yet. We all know no cave is complete without bats, so today I just want to have some fun creating a brand new enemy type for Dauphin. That said, it is just after 8am now and I'd really like to get a run in before the heat of the day sets in, so I think I'm going to take a break and go do that, and we'll catch up sometime this afternoon after I've had some time to work on these new enemies. Hey everyone, back on Sunday morning with the final update of the devlog, and I'm happy to report that yesterday was a super productive day, so I'm excited to show you some of the changes I was able to squeeze in. The main focus of yesterday was working on the first bat enemies for the game. Let's see if I can find one here in the cave. These are still going to require quite a bit of polish, but I have to say I'm pretty happy with how the first iteration turns out. Here is one now. You can see that these guys have a little more of an erratic wander pattern than the crabs do, and their attack pattern is a little different too. If I get within a certain range of this bat, he'll kind of flap his wings faster and charge up and then lunge at the player. This is pretty cool and really just amounted to a brand new state that I wrote for this bat state machine. If you're wondering how I'm spawning the bats in my procedurally generated caves, that's actually the easy part because I've designed each of the rooms of the caves by hand. All I had to do was have certain rooms that actually contain instances of the bat scenes and I've got a bunch of those. So if any of these rooms that contain bats are used to generate the caves, the bats will spawn. Finally, the last enhancement that I made yesterday was to bring back our animated ocean. This is something that was on my to-do list for such a long time after I converted the project from Unity to Godot, and I'm pleased to say it was just super easy to accomplish in Godot, so I was thrilled about that. All I had to do was create an animated texture resource using the various frames of my tile set, and then once I had that, I was actually able to create a Godot tile set from that and just use the tiles as normal. Super frictionless workflow. With so much accomplished in the past week, I think I'm finally ready to wrap up this episode. As always, thanks so much for watching and for your continued support as we edge closer and closer to 100,000 subscribers. Hope you enjoyed watching, and of course, I will see you in the next video.